morning. It's Tina Traster of the Rockland County Business Journal. And how are you this morning? I am fine. I'm glad to see that everything is still standing after that uh, sideways race. Yeah, it was tough. It really was. It was scary. It was. It was really, really frightening. At one point, the view outside of my living room window looked like a car wash. Oof. So <laughs> it, was, it was pretty scary. But yeah. the world seems to be standing again, so this is good. Um, anyway, um, today I'm going to talk about a story that we published late last week. Um, this is, we did a, a pretty intimate interview with the, um, the entrepreneur who ran um, a, a real treasure in, in New City uh, for uh, a decade, uh, but who ultimately succumbed to the pandemic, though her business really uh, did not spiral downward specifically because of the pandemic. So we're talking about the Holla Ferry. Um, and we are talking about Connolly Fisher, who ran the Holla Ferry um, in New City uh, on um, North Main Street in, in the, um, the, the large shopping center at 170 North Main Street uh, near the Citibank. And um, I don't know if you know, I don't know if uh, listeners know, know the story, but... Um, she started, you know, the classic, she started in her kitchen, she moved into the garage, she had a very small 500 square foot space um, on, I think it was 3rd Street in New City, and then, you know, she stepped up and opened up a, a bakery cafe and um, made this um, product, uh, Hala, that so many of us enjoy for one reason or another at one time or another. Um, and she, you know, just year over year, you know, as the years marched on, she just couldn't get enough consistent business uh, to come to her cafe bakery. And she just kept, you know, persevering at it and, and pursuing it and had um, wholesale supermarket orders and, um, you know, she was selling to some of the, the Jewish schools and, and I mean, she, you know, she had what, what, what we call the Oprah bump, you know, right? She had a lot of publicity. People knew about her. Um, but what she ultimately felt and, and what she was very open about in, in, the, in the piece that we published is she just felt that the community ultimately didn't support her, um, that um, she found that with, with secular uh, Jewish people um, that it was less and less important, I guess, uh, to, to, uh, to celebrate Shabbos, you know, the Sabbath on, on Friday. And so uh, she wasn't seeing those kind of regular sales for the, for the, um, uh, for the challah. And, um, the, you know, when she opened up this, this establishment, she felt that what was, was important was to have a cafe to go with it and uh, where she served kosher food. And even this didn't really, uh, you know, light enough of a match uh, because the, she, she felt that, I guess, the, largely the community that wants to eat kosher food um, is not in New City. It's, it's, in, it's in Ramapo. Um, so, uh, you know... Do you remember, I don't mean to derail you at all, but do you remember a place in New City called Maxi City? I don't. What did they sell? Oh, it was it was a Jewish restaurant. Coach, you might see. We grew up in a neighborhood that was right down the middle, half Jewish, half Italian, and the mothers used to trade dishes with one another, and so on and so forth. My mother was so excited about that place. She would take us there all the time. Maxi City in New City. Uh, oh, I wish she had known it. But anyway, that's what you reminded me of. Well, it's it's. I find this to be kind of a sad story. You know, I um. You know, I know that there are many, many bakers um, who, who go into business and, and really, to, you know, they're artists, uh, they're artisans, they're, they're people who put so much love in, into the product. Um, but as she says, and, and we say, we, we quote her at the end of the story, she says, she says, I'm a businesswoman, but I guess I'm not a businesswoman, I'm a baker. And... Um, you know, she said that, that she, she put all of her intense desire and passion uh, into this because many bake, for many bakers, it, it's about, you know, bringing joy. Because, you know, baked goods, 
have they carry the weight of they're so freighted with um, emotion and family and symbolism and um, you know the, the you know but the bakery you know baked goods they just they have so much um, weight on the table really and um, it's just sad I, I think that that a that a business like this um, was not able to thrive I think what she ultimately felt was that the location uh, just was was what doomed her. You know, perhaps if she had, I guess, stayed small um, or maybe had just gone, you know, on the wholesale side, maybe she, she would have had a different outcome. Or had she gone to a neighborhood where, you know, Hala is on the table every single Friday night, you know, maybe she would have had. But she said that she had moved into that location. She had hired people. She had set up a cafe. And I guess she became, you know, just overly attached to um, wanting to make it work. And uh, she said that, you know, she'd been at best breaking even uh, for, for many years. And then, you know, even through the pandemic, she, she kept those ovens fired through Passover and even through Rosh Hashanah. Um, but, at, but in October, she finally closed the door for the last time. So, yeah, I think it was um, yeah, it's a little bit of a, a sad, you know, there are many, many businesses that are not going to survive this. And... At the same time, I suppose new ones will take their place. But this, um, you know, what she had going there was just so specific, and I don't think that that you could find Hala, you know, anywhere else in in Clarkstown um, or Orange Town, for example. Not home, not home baked. Um, so you know, I think I think it's a loss, and I think, and you know, it was really interesting because something that she said is that. You know, people come to the shop and they see that she, that she's closed now, and and they say, "Oh my God, well that's terrible. Where, where did where did she go?" And and she said, "That's the very point. Is that had she had you know consistent community support, nobody would have been surprised to see that her doors have, have you know that she shut the door, that she's closed the doors, and that the place is dark." So. It's um, it's it's you know, it's an interesting read because she was really honest about her journey, and um, you know, I, I'm yeah, I guess there's a lesson in here somewhere. Um, I think ultimately she just felt that she needed more community support. So maybe we, you know, the the, the lesson is that we we need to 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 support small businesses. Oh, there's no doubt about that. But I mean, there that. There's a lot of small businesses in Rockland that need everybody's support, and there are lots of people who, unfortunately, are uh, during this COVID situation, are hurting at this time. Yeah. And there's only so many pizza places and radio stations and and media outlets that people can support, right? Yes, yes. I, you know, I mean, I, I agree with that. that if there's a conscious conscious effort to support uh, local um, endeavors, I think that you know we just stand a better chance. We all do. Um, for example, the other story that we put up last week, which I was going to segue into, if I have a second or so, is, you know, in Piermont, they have a very um, uh, strong uh, new uh, president, Peter Helu, and um, he's been leading a lot of good in endeavors. Piermont in this pandemic has really gathered together, figured out how to use their resources. Um, they are putting together a Christmas, uh, not, no, not Christmas, a holiday, a holiday bazaar that's starting the weekend of Thanksgiving and running through, uh, through, through Christmas, I think. Um, and it's going to be an outdoor, you know, COVID safe kind of endeavor. And between the village and, and the chamber, they've banded together to, to use funds to purchase, you know, tents, outdoor tents to get uh, those like concrete blockades so that restaurants can create outdoor seating, to work with the restaurants on, on the, you know, the fire codes and the municipal codes to get the, uh, the seating going on out, out there. And they've even purchased two petty, you know, pedicabs, you know what those are, those, um, those bicycle um, dri driven, um, you know, like horse carriages, but they're bicycles. Right. In an, in an effort to bring people down to Piermont in and around the holidays and drive them around, and oh, and they're doing a bigger uh, Christmas tree this year. So this is an example of how a um, you know a village is working together to support its restaurants and its its local retailers 
because this is the sort of all-out effort that is really going to be needed right now to, to keep businesses alive. So, um, and uh, are you st- that's up last week? Yeah, both of these stories uh, were posted uh, last week. But so they're still there, right? Yes, so you can go to rcbizjournal.com and you can read both of those stories. Um, I, I put them together just because for, for the Hala Ferry, it, it seems like ultimately she felt she was in a vacuum, oh. whereas in Piermont, I think yeah. the sense of camaraderie amongst the, the merchants, the retailers, the restaurants, and they have the support of the mayor. And, um, you know, so I, I think that, you know, the pandemic is just, it's like a million lessons, and, and, and these stories have those little nuggets. Um, and finally, I just want to uh, say that, you know, people should um, go, on, go on our site and sign up, uh, subscribe to, to the newsletter that goes out every single day, Monday through Friday, um, with a news story. You can go right uh, on the site and just put in your email address, and that's all you need to do to get listed on our, subscriber, our free subscriber list. All right, Tina, thank you much. See you next all week. Right.